Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. This week we've got new gravel tyres, a top secret new TT bike, stealthy wahoos, your upgrades, the bike vault and... Our main talking point, bikes that last forever. Can we build the world's most reliable bike? Can we build the world's most reliable bike? A bike that would last indefinitely and require minimal maintenance. Yeah, this week we're celebrating reliable tech and components. Not the lightest, not the most expensive, not the most aero, the most bomb-proof, the most durable bits of tech. We love solid components, things that last forever, save you money, better for the environment, and less stressful to own. Right, let's start with the frame. Yeah. What would you go for? Carbon, aluminium, titanium, steel? Do you know what? I think I'd go for a titanium frame. Yeah, Because Why? the corrosion resistance is really good with titanium, so it's gonna yeah. last a long time. Like steel can, can rust, can't it? A bit more, e more easily. And I know we've said we're not bothered about being lightweight and all that stuff, but titanium is a bit lighter than steel and you know it's a bit yeah. stronger than aluminium, so I'd probably be tempted to go with that, to be honest. Good shout, but it is tougher to weld than steel, so if you did need to fix it, you need some specialist gear. Yeah. The steel does win some points here. Yeah, yeah. I, it does, but I mean, right. either way, we're going for, I think we're agreed, we we'll go for an alloy frame because you can machine it to greater accuracy with greater tolerances than a carbon frame. So we can get, you know, a nice uh, threaded bottom bracket in there, nice headset in there that's there's not going to be any play and that should last longer with a threaded BB than, you know, like a press fit design. I would be tempted to try one of them Cane Creek bottom brackets. Oh, meant to last forever? Yes, Hellbender Cane Creek bottom bracket. They were at Eurobike last year. Yeah. No lube in them, like just a polymer insert. Good shout, that'd be good. Right, group set then. What are we saying? DI2, mechanical? Well, DI2 is super reliable and pretty rugged in my experience, but you can't charge flat DI2 batteries in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, good So, point. mechanical. Yeah, I think, yeah, Ultegra. Ultegra mechanical for me as well, I reckon. Yeah. But, hydro disc brakes. Got be because, right, I mean, uh, yeah, you're gonna have to change bits out, but it, they are very reliable, and I'd rather be changing out rotors than changing out rims yeah. and wearing my rims down. And if you're loading up the bike with loads of supplies, you want the extra stopping power, don't you? The braking power of disc brakes. That's my thinking. But Ultegra gears, I'm not sure that's the best bet. Mm -hmm. What about until hub gearing or a belt drive? Good idea. Better option? Yeah, I haven't thought of that, but I guess you're right, because I mean like a belt drive, that's in theory gonna offer less maintenance, less frequent servicing, and um, well, it should last longer than chain-based system, and you don't need to worry about lubricating it. Exactly. What wheels? Do you know what? I, I'm, I want something bomb-proof, so I, I'm gonna go for something custom on this. Yeah. I think a really high spoke count, so they'll be Definitely. quite heavy, these wheels, but with a really high spoke count, should be a lot a lot stronger and also I want something nice and wide so that I can put 40 mil tires on because I want to be able to ride on road and off road. Anyway tires right also I'm thinking solid tires like yeah. Tannis tires because because I mean you're not going to puncture on those they last for ages they're, they're a bit slower rolling resistance well quite a lot slower rolling resistance than a pneumatic tire but, yeah, but it doesn't matter because it's not like you're doing a time trial or an hour record doesn't count if Manon mentions it, just saying. Anyway, what have we missed? What have we forgotten about? Let us know what you'd include in your bomb-proof bike builds down in the comments section below, and also in the app. Now it's time for some hot tech. Lapierre have been very busy. They have. Now, a couple of weeks ago on the tech show, we reported on a top secret new Lapierre air code uh, disc brake aero bike that we saw Stefan Kung riding. And well, this last week at Paris Nice, Stefan Kung and Thibaut Pino were spotted aboard what we believe is a new lap here. I mean, it probably is, they're sponsored by them, but a disc brake equipped time trial bike. Check this out. Oh, it looks very fast, doesn't it? It does. Uh, I'll tell you what, the down tube design as well, that reminds me of the Pinarello Belide. I think that looks quite similar to that. And interestingly, FDJ or Group Arma FDJ are one of the top tier Shimano sponsored teams. But at present, Shimano doesn't make a disc disc. So they're using like an un unbadged one on, on the bike at the rear for the rear wheel, which I'm not sure what it is 100%. It looks to me like it might be a Roval 
disc disc, but I guess we'll see. Also, mm -hmm. a few other details. It looks like they're running a GP5000 clincher tire on the back. Interesting. And that skin suit, that, that's, uh, I mean, that suspiciously looks to me like a no pins flow suit skin suit, like what I wore for the, I can't remember what I wore it for. Just say it. Without a record. Speaking of disc brake wheels, Swissside has launched its disc brake version of the Hadron Classic 800 wheels. Yeah, some quick stats, right? They're 28 millimeters wide on the rim, feature DT Swiss 370 hubs. Uh, they're 80 millimeters deep and the retail price is, I think, what, 1,400 euros or about 1,500 pounds. So if you're after some, you know, deep wheels for maximum aero and bling, could be a good option. Mm -hmm. On to tyres now, and Zip are making a big shift towards gravel, and they have announced the launch of their first ever gravel tyre, the Tangent Course G40. Yeah, it's a gravel-specific tubeless tyre, which they say gives you smooth control over untamed roads. Pretty cool. Also, claimed weight, 465 grams per tyre, and my favourite detail, tan sidewalls. Mm, tan sidewalls. You can get your hands on these from April and they'll cost £64. And finally this week in Hot Tech, we've got some Wahoo news. So they've just dropped the recommended retail price of the Element Bolt to 184.99. So if you're in the market for a GPS, it seems like a good opportunity to get one. That's and they've good. released, that's not all, they've released a stealth edition of the Bolt. Check this out. So mine, grey. Mine's right? grey too. You now get it in this nice stealthy black. Kind black. of want one of those. But they've updated the firmware as well. So this is across like all of the Wahoo Bolts. Um, so it now offers support for the Angie system with the specialised helmets, yeah. you know, the safety system that gives alerts. And also Amp Plus Lev, which allows for like e-bike metrics on your Wahoo That's as cool. well. Things like range and battery life. Yeah, pretty cool. Decent. Yeah, more hot tech next week. Snacks of the week now. Snacks of the week? What's that? Snack, it's, it's where people, the viewers send us in um, snacks. Uh, it doesn't happen every week because mm. I mean, I wish it did, but it depends on if people send us snacks or not. Anyway, this week we've been sent some coffee. Check this out from David Cameron. I'm guessing it's not the David Cameron, though it might be. Um, but yeah, he's making coffee. It's called the Sports Barista. These are coffee bags. Coffee bags? Yeah. I mean, they've heard of tea bags, but coffee bags? Heard. That's Welsh for heard. Yeah. <laughs> I too have heard of tea bags, <laughs> not of coffee bags. Sorry. <laughs> but but um, there's 336 milligrams of caffeine in one of these. That's more than in the caffeine gel. Yeah, it's loads, isn't it? It's so much. Yeah, so the reason being that these are specifically aimed at uh, sort of performance caffeine intake. Uh, so like athletes taking caffeine before a race or something. You could have had one of them for your hour record. I, I should have would have, flying. I would it would have, would have broken the hour record. Anyway, hopefully more snacks next week. Cheers, David Cameron. Cha-ching. It's now time for screw riding upgrades by upgrades, where you submit upgrades that you've made to your bikes and cycling lives for the chance to win the ultimate prize, a GCN cap or casket, if you hank. Now, last week we had, it was, was some very good. They were very last good week. last week. So we had Sam Fisher's Sensible Steed versus Julian girl, Julian's girlfriend, Lulu, her customized look. Um, the winner, Manon. With 81% was Lulu's look. It was a very good upgrade. It was, well well, and it was always gonna to be tough for uh, Sam Fisher Sensible Steed, but get in contact on Facebook and we'll arrange your cap or casket to be sent out to you in the post. Right, also I'm thinking, considering the current situation, right, with um, so many people in Europe now on lockdown, it would be cool next week to do an upgrade segment that was, well, your pain cave upgrades. It would be, that yeah. would be really cool. Seeing as we all might have to be cycling exclusively indoors yeah. in the near future. Yeah, so get them submitted on the app. The and, best uh, cave, pain cave. Yeah, the best pain cave. Mm. We'll do that next week, if you how you've upgraded it and what you've done. That'd be cool. But this week, in the meantime, um, kicking us off, we have got this entry from Spanky24UK, who I'm, <laughs> now I've read it, I think, just only called himself that for the sole hope that we would read out his ridiculous name so he could laugh at us. And you've done it. And he's beaten us. Yeah. 
Anyway, uh, he's had a go at cycling, uh, upcycling and he found this uh, frame on eBay, a rather beautiful uh, Merida Reacto 400, which is the alloy version of the Reacto Carbon. A nice frame that, and he's he won the bid, received the frame, set to work on it, and he really wanted to repaint it and give it a color scheme that would pop. So he managed to find somewhere that would supply him with holographic paint. Mm. So this is, this is what he started out with before. That's the, the base color with the old uh, Lamprey Merida color scheme on there as well, with that kind of like lime green and pink on there. It's a pretty cool looking bike actually. But yeah, he stripped that down. It's just thousands of hours of wet, dry sanding and buffing. Look at that. It's got all glittery and iridescent. Love that. Well, of course it's going to appeal to you. Put yeah. glitter on it. Put glitter on it. Manon loves it. Right. Um, that is, that is blooming nice. I like that. That, I'm going to put myself out there. I, I'm saying of all the upgraded paint jobs we've seen, I'm that is the one I've been that I'm most impressed with. So I think you're saying you like glitter now? I think that yeah, in the right I converted you gold chain as well. That. Come on, yes. Cha-ching. Um, he's done a cracking that job. That is really nice. Banged on 105, group set on there. Power tap, uh, pedals, power measurement. That is, that is smart. I mean, that, if that was, if this was the bike ball, that's a super that's nice, a super isn't nice, it? I mean, yeah. he's lined up the valves and everything. I think he's watched this before. That is a, that is a flipping good, a mother flipping good upgrade. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be tough this week. Whoever's up against that, wow. Right, who have we got, Manon? River City Rider. He got this bike for 80 US dollars. Um, it's a Cannondale ST400 with Shimano 600 group set. Mm. He stripped the, fra the frame, the fork, down to the bare metal, scrubbed every part, repackaged all the bearings and polished the chrome. Nice. Bought some new Continental 28 tires, cables, saddles and bar tape, topped off with a silver KMC chain. Right, this anyway, is what else? Well, that's, uh, this is it before? Yeah, it's pretty tired looking. But $80, that's a it's bargain, bargain, isn't it? But it's pretty, it's it looks pretty... like it'll function for $80. What's mad $80. is that you've got that old retro Cannondale logo on the top tube, which is kind of like what they've reverted back to yeah, on the modern is. ones again now. Yeah. Pretty, pretty cool. Um, yeah, so that's, he's done a good job of stripping all that back, stripping it down. That's, ooh, look at that. I like the brown touches. That is, uh, that's nice. Yeah, the saddle Keeping matching the, the bar tape is is a classic move. Well done. You did. I, li I do like the retro look of that bike. Yeah. I think it's very smart and very tidy. Also, nice high spoke count on his wheels. Durable. Good for the zombies. Um, yeah, that's very nice, actually. And I do like that grey. It's like a, a bit like a sort of Nardo grey, isn't it? Yeah. Bit of a yeah, Renardo Grey thing going on. Nice. I like that, it's very good. But it's oh it's a that glittery Merida. Can't you be. love the glitter. Okay. Who'd have thought? Anyway, it's not down to us. Vote in the app, you decide who's gonna win, which is the best upgrade, who gets a cap. Now it's time for the bike vault. My favourite part of the show. Yeah. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the Bike Vault, what happens is you submit pictures of your bike on the GCN app, and then we judge them to be either nice or super nice. What happens if they're super nice, Manon? They get put to the Bike Vault forever, and the bell gets rung. Yeah. You can ring the bell this week if you want. Ah, it's all right, you know, I've been, I haven't been ringing it for years, it's fine. You've been around you can have, a while. You, you can have a go, yeah. yeah. You sure? That's, that's fine, yeah. But if you disagree with any of our judgments on the Bike Vault, which you, I mean, you, you're probably you're probably going to. And don't worry, because you can vote for them yourself in the GCN app. Right. So first up this week, we have this. Ooh, very nice. S Works tarmac from Julian Davies. Uh, says he's just cleaned it after a 70 miler in the Cheshire lanes. Good. Always clean your bike for the bike vault. Always helps. Um, that's very nice, isn't it? I do like that. Black everything. Black handlebar tape. Black saddle. Mm. Valves in line. Beautiful tan side wall I tires. Knew Big, you were gonna say that. Biggie Smalls. Um, uh, I mean, he's he's three crank three o'clock position. No, uh, no chimney. No as, chimney. As Manon calls it, no chimney. I mean, that's 
He's ticked oh, all the boxes, hasn't he? He's ticked the boxes. Should we ring the bell? Let's just see that. That is how it's done. Hopefully more of that this week. Right, we've got this. Oh, beautiful Chinelli. Ooh. More tan sidewalls. Yeah. I do like tan sidewalls, you know. Yeah, you've said. Yeah, so that's from Vel Veldhoven. <laughs> He's for, hi, I'm Niels from uh, Lissy in the Netherlands. Cool. Um, he's just building this bike in his shed, taking it for the first spin. What do you make of that? Nice. Oh, it's good, isn't it? I like the pedals, the green. Look, well, yeah, a little bit of gold on there. It's got Campag record on there, mechanical, very nice. Oh, what do you make of that? It's a little chimney. Little a chimney. A little chimney. A little chimney going on there. <laughs> has removed his bottles, has lined up the, uh, the wheel valves and stuff yeah. though. I mean, he's done... He's clearly watched the bike vault. Yeah. You know, he's... he's I've, I mean, I do like that Chinelli. That's a nice colour. Well, I think it's super nice. Super nice. We're off to a good start. Yeah. This good, good entries. Um, oh, interesting Ooh. one here. What have we got? From Reese, my early 90s Cannondale SC600. This, this looks like a little bit like the bike we had in upgrades. It is. Well, it's a later one, isn't it? Because it's got, it's, well, it's similar. Very similar. Yeah. Similar colour. But it's, uh, a, yeah, I mean, I don't think, that, I think that's a custom paint job on there. I don't think that's the original. Yeah. He's, he's, he says here, actually, he's, he re-sprayed it because of corrosion and the original paintwork. Mm. Yeah. Which is, uh, he's done a nice job with that though. But this isn't the upgrade segment. What we, uh, what we're saying. Where are the valves? I can't see the valves. I'm looking as well, I can't see him. That crank arm is 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 weirdly dirty. The rest of the bike's clean. Oh, the cassette's not very clean. Oh. Dirty drivetrain. He hasn't cleaned his drivetrain. He's clean the rest. Mm. Number one rule, clean bike. Oh, I think it could be cleaner. I think it's a nice Unless bike. the light's on. Is that a light? Well, that's, I don't know, I think it's a nice. I think, the, nice. I just think it's the lack of cleanliness. We can't. It's an early 90s bike. I know, but you still clean it. Anyway. Mm. Next in from Robert in Germany with his Ooh. Canyon Aeroad. Ooh, that's very nice, isn't it? Stealthy. Yeah, in Hanover, Deutschland. Um, look at that. He's got his oversized jockey wheels on the back, nice. ceramic speed, very bling. Yeah. They're really bling wheels as well. So they're the DT Swiss Arc. Uh, one one hundred die cuts, which is the they're the top of the range wheels that DT Swiss does. Um, yeah, de designed with Swiss side, mm. who were earlier in the show. Also, oh god, he's really trying to get bonus marks here, isn't he? GCM war bottle. Teacher's pet. <sighs> oh, wow, this is a seriously bling bike. This one. This is a machine. Yeah, I mean, he's got his uh, Garmin Vector power meter pedals on there. His Garmin fancy. Mega light thing, I forget the name of it, but that's the fancy Garmin mm. light. Left that on. Yeah, but it's, Is it's it quite a fancy Is bling it? Oh. techie my, light. My light doesn't look like that. Yeah, it's quite a, it's quite a fancy one. I think it's it's very nice, that it isn't is. it? A lot of layback on the saddle. Yeah. It's positioned quite far no back. No chimney. No chimney, yeah. Oh, lined up as well. Oh, that's Okay, you are right, but... Um, yeah, I just, I just knew. Okay. Right, well, next up we've got Denderman. Denderman. Do you reckon that's his real name? Um, he's, he's got this titanium bike, which he says he's done Fred Witten on. One of my favourite rides. Nice. Says it's timelessly elegant and fast. Will be the judge of that Denderman. Uh, but it is a beautiful Didaccia titanium frame, isn't it, that? Yeah carbon fork on there. Um, is that in Biggie Smalls? I think that's like Biggie in quite small. Yeah, I'm not sure. That's not quite Biggie Smalls, is it? Not quite. Ooh. Also, what do you think of that? Oh, that's at like between well, three and four. that's passable actually, because what, what some people do, I don't agree with this, I think three o'clock is optimum. Some people do align the crank arm with the chainstay. I think that's okay, we'll go with that. One bottle, yeah. not two. I mean, he's left a few accessories on there. He's left his nice little 
Um, At least it's a nice neat saddle bag. Saddle bag, yeah. Oh. No chimney. No chimney. Valves aligned. Tires. Yep. Yeah. Oh, it's a super nice that. Taking the boxes. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for in the bike vault this week. Yeah. Maybe send some more glittery bikes in next week. Ollie stuff would like them. Glitter doesn't automatically get you into the bike vault. I'm just putting that out. It doesn't automatically gain you entry. It helps. Anyway, submit your entries using the app. And, uh, well, if you'd like to support the channel, well, you can head over to the GCN shop. We've got all manner of goodies, including GCN. Mine's got a stain on it, sorry. GCN mugs, great for coffee and other warm beverages. Anyhow, we'll catch you next week. Bye. Uh, he liked the downshift tubers and he knows- Downshift tubers? <laughs> oh, downshift, <sorry. laughs> downshift tubers sounds like a band. <laughs>